Isaac would say, oh, Dad, Dad, take care. Please stand for the light of Christ. We worship this morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome morning. to St. Paul, everybody here and online. Please join me in the call to worship. We come to worship enduring the ups and downs of life. We, we have, have hope from, from seeing glimpses of glory, of glory along, along the way. way. We expect to see Christ and to be transformed by the Spirit. We, we are, are committed, committed to, to the, the journey, journey with wonder and joy. joy. We say yes to grace with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We live our faith with humility, respect, and love. Let us pray. Awesome God who gives us life, we worship you today with all who we are and all that we have. Without you, our lives have no meaning even though we often ignore this truth. We try to climb the mountains of life on our own, only to fall back down. We try to write our own stories of success and wealth, only to come up short, seeking more. May we trust in you and in your grace, for you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You have already chosen us, and in you we have life, death, and life once more. To you be the glory. In the name of Jesus, and with the Spirit's power, we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is To God Be the Glory, number 98 in the United Methodist Hymnal.
Amen. And you may be seated. We have a wonderful blessing today to share in the sacrament of holy baptism. We welcome the Ernst and the Bowie family today in worship. And I am proud to say that John is the grandson of Bernice Russell, a name that many of you will remember, one of the saints of this church, the one who donated our beautiful piano and who taught some of you how to play. So today, as we baptize this beautiful baby girl and we celebrate the family of God, we know that the communion of the saints, including Grandmother Bernice, is with us here today. I invite those of the family who want to come forward. You want to wait? Oh, your parents aren't here yet? Okay. A couple minutes, so that'll be perfect. Let's go on and we'll do our prayers, and then we will do the baptism. Oh, well, okay. Very good. Have them come on in. We can go ahead and we can announce some prayers and let them get in and settled and get a deep breath. We don't want to we don't want to rush. So, in our prayer time, we have prayers that are turned in on our yellow prayer cards. Thank you for those who do that. That way we can read them. And so, we have prayers and more prayers. Awesome. We love our prayers. Jeff, we're praying for Jeff Finkin, Diana Stanish, and Char Ohl. Prayers for them. We are also praying for Scott Smith. And we are, uh, Barb Steffen offers prayers um, for Donna Goodyear. Donna's sister-in-law, Kathy Swanson, uh, fell and uh, had, a, had a fatality from her fall. She never recovered. So the, we pray for the family of Kathy Swanson um, and uh, pray for uh, Barb's relation, Donna. Also, we have prayers for me, uh, Pastor Abby. Uh, I am going in for hip surgery tomorrow morning and uh, will be off for three weeks. So I thank you for your prayers and your care. Um, and uh, going in for, I think, I don't know if I just said it, but for hip surgery. So um, hopefully all will go well. And I want to give thanks and praise and ask you to pray for Sandy, for Janelle, for the United Methodist Women here at St. Paul, and for Diana Spurk, who will be leading worship um, in uh, those three weeks. I also want to uh, just give thanks for all of you who help make worship happen. Uh, we do this together, people um, and pastor, and uh, without you, we couldn't worship. So um, I just give my thanks and praise for you as we continue to be church in the next three weeks. And uh, I know that God is working among us. All right. Some other prayers that have been offered ahead of time. Um, we give thanks for those who are contributing to our Boiler Bust campaign. This campaign runs through November 1st, and we are almost to our first goal of $10,000. If we can go past that, we will have money to get a second boiler, which will be needed soon, but um, we are almost to our goal of $10,000, so thanks and praise for that. And, uh, May you um, continue, if you've been thinking about it, continue to be generous and know uh, we're trying to com complete that by November 1st. And then this week, this coming Saturday, we have our annual Pork Chop Supper. This is our annual fundraiser that we do. We offer a meal to the community and we raise some funds for the mission and the ministry of our church. And it's really good food. So thank you to all who are helping, serving, bringing food, cooking, all of those good things. Thank you for inviting others 
and uh, may God bless our efforts and may the, the, the generosity just overflow so that we can continue to be in ministry here in South Sioux City. All right. I believe those are all the prayers that have been given to me. We continue to pray for the drought that is happening among us. Our land is so dry, and there doesn't seem to be much rain in the forecast. So may God care for us as uh, we go through this drought season. And I ask that we pray for all of our farmers and those out in the fields as harvest is happening right now. May we be aware as we drive and watch for those grain carts and semis and uh, combines that are on the roads. Uh, this is their time and their workspace, so uh, let us pray for them and be generous in our driving. Okay. Um, as we offer these prayers, let us take a moment with God, and we will um, continue our prayers together. So please be in an attitude of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all that you have given to us to this day, for the life that you breathe into us and for the grace that you pour out over us. We know that there is nothing that you can do. Excuse me. We know there's nothing that we can do to separate our, from your love that even though we can turn away, your love remains strong, and you call us back each and every time. Nothing can separate us from you. And so you call us to share our lives with you so that we may enjoy the promises and the benefits of a life in your grace. God, we offer you our prayers today. Those that we have said out loud today and, and those that remain in our hearts and our minds. For prayers of healing for those needing surgery or recovery, those who are in the hospital, those who are dealing with chronic illnesses and are sick today. May your healing touch be upon them. May you reduce the pain and offer encouragement for hope in the future. God, we pray for those who are struggling with other concerns, money challenges, family difficulties, those who are looking for meaning and purpose in their life. Oh God, we give it all to you, knowing that you can guide our steps and you can show us the way. And finally, God, we confess that we don't always get it right in being your people. We fail to be your church that obeys you and shares your love with the world. Oh God, please forgive us on this very day. Thank you for your forgiveness that comes through your son Jesus. For he took the power of sin and death to the cross and he died with it so that he could rise again with new life showing us the way of grace instead. He took away our fears and instead gives us hope that no matter what love wins, your light shines in the darkness and can never be put out. We can trust in you from beginning to end. God, thank you for your forgiveness that comes through Jesus. For through him, all things are redeemed, 
and reconciled. They can be made one in you, in union with you, so that we might be the people of love we were created to be. Oh, friends, that is good news for all of us. Oh, God, we give you all thanks and praise, all glory and honor. We conclude our prayers today with the prayer that Jesus taught us, the prayer of our faith, saying together with one voice, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Are we ready? Okay. Now I'm going to invite all who are going to come forward for the baptism to take your spot right up here. And church, I invite you to use your red hymnals, and you can turn to page 39. Okay, I'm going to have you all scoot that way. You're going to be right in the center here. So... Yep, I want you right front and center. Okay, I want you over here in front of the flowers, maybe. There we go. Perfect. Ah, that's perfect. Come on up. Maybe stand behind. All right. That's fine. All right. It's okay. Now remember, we are a family here, and God is with us. <laughs> All right. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift, offered without a price. So, to John and Hume, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, in whatever forms they present themselves. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord, in union with Christ and his church, which is open to all people, all ages, nations, and races? Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly and to lead a Christian life. If so, say I will. And friends, at the bottom of page 40, will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include these people now before you in your care? With God's help. Do any for us? Mm hmm. All right. Okay. 
Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit, dear God, to bless this gift of water and she who receives it, to wash away her sin, to clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. We give all praise to you, O God, through your Son, Jesus, and with the Holy Spirit, who lives and reigns forever. Amen. can go over here if they want to watch it, if they want to see. Right. Miss Mai. She's getting crabby. What you doing, baby girl? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Let's see what you're going to do. Who do you know the best? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Maybe. Let's, okay. Okay. Here. 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 Yeah. Is that better? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Who do you want? Let's see who wants she wants to go to. Can you hold her? Is, is that is that who you? That's who you want. What does she call you? What name? All right, that's who she wants. Okay. Will you hold her for me? All right, just let go of me. All right. <laughs> Are you ready? It's warm. You have her touch it. It's warm like a bath. Can you have her touch it? Water. Yeah. She's looking at me like, what are you doing? You can touch it. Nope. Nope. Okay. There we go. All right. Oh, now she likes it. All right. Here we go. So, my Ernst Bui, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Oh, isn't that pretty? All right. All right. Will you lay her your hands on her head? My being born and baptized of the water and spirit, may you be a faithful disciple, born in Jesus Christ. Amen. It's okay. You know what? We're all done. Praise be to God. <laughs> yes, we have a little bit more before you go. We welcome you to the church. And before you go, Community of Faith on page 43. It is our joy to welcome this child as a new sister in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. And with joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. So, members of the household of God, I commend my to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love.
But may the God of grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. You should see the smile that she has now on her face. <laughs> she likes the water. <laughs> Can you turn it and show her this way? Show her that way. There we go. There we go. So, friends, our newest sister in Christ, and we welcome her and your whole family today. Again, congratulations. <laughs> this, is for, this is for you. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Do you want to touch the water? You want to lift her up? <laughs> she likes it. It's okay. Can you reach? Yeah? Reach in there. It's okay. You can touch it. It's warm like that. <coughs> Jesus loves you very much. <laughs> yes. Yes, he does. There you go. The holy water that brings joy and peace. <laughs> Jesus loves you. Glad to have you here. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. You may be seated. Yes, what a blessing. I'm so glad you're back here today. And as we think about the joy of the waters and of the life that we have, let us sing for the beauty of the earth.
Our scripture reading today is from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence in it, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of God for the people of God. Spirit of the living God, may the message that I speak today and the word that we all hear reveal with boldness the mystery of the gospel and the power of grace. O oh God, may your word dwell richly within all of us. Amen. So we have arrived to the end of this worship series where we have been talking about the building blocks of faith, building a biblic biblical you. We have been on this faith journey and we've looked at concepts of humility, resilience, contentment, self-respect, and commitment. I'm excited for today and for our last practice, because this is one that I think is the most important. And I have dedicated my whole life to it. This practice has eternal consequences, and it permeates literally everything that we say or think or do. And that is not an exaggeration. Today, we are going to explore the topic of worship. So what is worship? Well, it is a deeply theological word that, that is not really taught in too many places. It's not discussed or described very often. It is a religious concept, so it's often kept separate or private. Many of us keep our worship practices um, to ourselves, and we don't necessarily talk about what we do or why we do. Yet, a, dis a disruption or an infringement of the act of worship causes immediate consequences for us and powerful reactions from us. If we have a demonstration that says we cannot worship, you know what will happen. When you, cannot, when you get people talking about worship, you'll find that as people start talking, there is much more included in this topic than meets the eye. We've been following writer David Brooks in this conversation of being a biblical you throughout these weeks. And he writes this about worship. I want you to think and see if, if you agree that his words are similar to your experience in uh, your development of worship over the years. He says this, a believer approaches God with a humble reverence and comes through study and prayer and the spiritual disciplines to get a feel for the grain of God's love. She gradually learns to live along with the grain and not against it. It's not a willful attempt to dominate life, nor is it a complete surrender or self-annihilation. It is an enthusiastic response. It is participation. 
a complex participation of a person's will with God's larger will. I'll repeat that last line again. A complex participation of a person's will into God's larger will. In our scripture today, it can also be thought about in terms of verse 6 that Sharon read, and it happens this way. And everything by prayers and thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We can say more simply that we offer our prayers and God offers peace. That is the union of our wills with God's will. Our prayers, God's peace. Now, worship has been a part of human societies in creation since the beginning of time. We live in a developed and enlightened culture, so we can consider these things and how they impact what and who we worship. Think about this. For the most part, we don't hunt and gather for our food anymore. We might go out and hunt, but it's not so we don't starve. Typically, we do that for entertainment now or, or for supplemental food. But we are not hunters and gatherers anymore. We have shelter. We have shelter from the weather and from nature. We have control over darkness and light with electricity. We have defined boundaries of land and property. We have a culture with Puritan influences with proper behavior and, and private feelings. So I want you to compare those ideas with this story of King David. This story is found in the Hebrew Bible in 2 Samuel chapter 6. I'm going to read the story of David. And he says, or it says, David and the whole house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all of their might with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place, inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went home to their house. Now, we don't have a visceral, dependent, essential sense of God in our world today. We do not worship God as though our lives depended on it. Even though we as Christians believe in the incarnation of Jesus Christ, we can and do act like God does not exist. And some would say we get along just fine. But do we? I propose that many of our social problems that we are experiencing today are really spiritual problems. As human beings, we have lost the sense of who we are and whose we are on a cosmic level. In many ways, we are trying to be God for ourselves, or we substitute God with something else. I mentioned that I've dedicated my life to worship, and so I tend to see things with a sense of worship in my view. And I've watched over the past few years where I see people in worship in places beyond the church. Now, this might step on someone's toes, but I have seen worship 
in football stadiums. People dressed in teen clothing with the same colors, people chanting and cheering and applauding, music and other rituals with the bands and the lights and the food and the drink. If you go to Memorial Stadium, you know what's going to happen at the beginning of that game, and you know how that is going to end. People dedicate themselves to the event, and they're willing to spend money and time and emotional energy on it. You have strong expressions of emotion during the event. People are bonding during that experience, and they're sharing the stories of that bonding afterwards. The same kind of thing happens at political rallies. It's the same idea, just different content. Some of those rallies go even further and introduce religious language so it can blur the lines between politics and religion. We can get our hearts and our minds going and be influential that way. Finally, at music concerts. Here is a place where there is a shared, emotional, often transcendent experience through music and singing. It is this very experience of music concerts that has permeated in our church worship life. We're now seeing churches where this is the form of worship, and this is what people are attracted to. So our choirs are becoming obsolete, and these kinds of churches are very popular. So considering these sporting events, political rallies, and music concerts, and what happens there, I want us to remember the demand to get these kinds of things back up and running after the pandemic. we got to get life back to normal. Yes, there was a financial motivation to do that. People were not getting money. And money is a desire that I'm going to talk about in a minute. But also, people were losing their worshiping communities. By not having these events where crowds of people can all be united together, where we express our devotion to a cause or a purpose or a person, our sense of being human was disrupted. We were isolated, we were individualized. We had our emotions and our expressions suppressed. Now we are experiencing the result of this pent-up worship. And it's coming out in negative ways. Through anger and fear and violence. Through arguing with one another. Through refusing to cooperate with each other. By putting people into separate groups and keeping them there and blatant disregard of people as people, human beings. And instead, we are giving permission to treat people as objects. Our refined society is becoming more barbaric because our worship was interrupted. And now more than ever, it's not directed toward an eternal source, an eternal source that gives light and love and life. In a speech that is famous among college commencement speeches, author David Foster Wallace addressed the Kenyan college graduates in, back in 2005. So these are his words to the young adults who were graduating that year. Keep in mind, again, he's talking to mostly 20-somethings, and he says these words. In the day-to-day -day trenches of adult life, there's actually no such thing as atheism. There's no such thing as not worshiping. Everybody worships. The only choice we get is what to worship. 
and an outstanding reason for choosing some sort of God or spiritual type thing to worship is that pretty much anything else you might worship will eat you alive. If you worship money and things, if that's where you tap real meaning in your life, then you will never have enough. Never feel like you have enough. It's the truth. He goes on to say, if you worship your own body and beauty and sexual allure, you will always feel ugly. And when time and age start to show, you will die a million deaths before they finally plant you. <laughs> worship power, you'll feel weak and afraid. And you will need ever more power over others to keep that fear at bay. Worship your intellect, being seen as smart, and you will end up feeling stupid. A fraud, always on the verge of being found out. Money, things, physical appearance, sex, power, intellect, education, success, his words give us pause about who or what we worship. Today's scripture is part of the larger letter that Paul writes to the church of Philippi. I hope it sounds familiar because I've preached on Philippians before, and I've preached on this very verses before, as it is one of my favorites. We could say it every day and it would never get old. For this is Paul's letter of joy, as we find in verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. When we worship with the church, we bring ourselves to God, and we encounter God in the proclamation of the scriptures, in the offering of sacraments like holy baptism and communion, and in the gathered body of Christ. We have a reminder of the Lord's words that he gives to Isaiah, found in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. God says, my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not be returned to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the things for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led back in with peace. Do you hear that merger of will in Isaiah's scripture? The Lord's word is proclaimed, it's given to us. And it will do what God wants it to do. And we respond and we are filled with joy and peace. So my friends, our question today is when we worship do we feel God's love, joy, and peace? Because the good news for us today is when we worship the living God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, that is exactly what happens. God brings joy and peace to all people. We saw it right here today in the baptismal waters. As the girls feel the warmth of God in that holy water. Our hearts reflect the joy and peace of being in Christ, which is how Paul often describes his expression of faith. That is how Paul talks about that merger of will. We are in Christ. I often use the phrase spiritual union or the union in Christ. Friends, can you imagine a world where people say, think, and do with joy and peace instead of busyness and chaos? How might our world be different if our very countenance is filled with joy and peace instead of the hurried rush of chaos and busyness? Well, friends, it is possible when we let our worship transform who we are and how we act when we leave this place. 
One final word from David Brooks. He repeats his idea of this merger. He says, God doesn't seem to want the elimination of our will. He seems to want the training and transformation of it. He doesn't want the lack of will, but a merger between the will of the person and the will of God. I say God doesn't want us to become robots and zombies who don't think and feel and don't have our free will. Instead, God wants to work within us, and that merger is possible. So we end today with one way that Paul offers for this merger of wills, this worship, this union. We can use this as a criteria as we go about our days, about what and who we worship. It was verse 8. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, honorable, just, whatever is pure, pleasing, commendable, If there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. We come to church to worship, to encounter and experience the living God. And that is something that people cannot get elsewhere. And yet that is something that people are looking for everywhere. So friends... Let us worship the living God and God alone. And let us invite others to worship God too. May it be so. Amen. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. And let us all stand and sing and give our thanks to God through our doxology. Praise God from whom all. As we conclude our worship today, 
we offer ways to serve in mission and ministry in response to our worship and God's grace. There's a calendar on the back of your bulletin that you can look at. And a reminder, I already, already mentioned our big pork chop supper this coming Saturday. I do believe that uh, someone wants to make an announcement, so I'm going to call Sharon forward to finish that up. Thank you, Sharon. I have a prayer on behalf of all of our congregation for Pastor Abby and oh. her surgery tomorrow. Wonderful. So if you guys would like to join me in prayer. Dear God, Please watch over Pastor Abby as she goes into surgery tomorrow. Give her peace and a tranquil heart. Direct the medical team's hands as they undergo surgery on her. Let Abby feel your hand upon her so that she may be comforted by your response in the operating room. Allow your light to shine through her to the doctors and the nurses there let them see your joy and peace upon her face. Thank you, Lord, for Abby and for the encouragement she has been for us. Please show us how to best support and comfort her during this time and afterward. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, St. Paul. Praise be to God. And we all... Pray together in our singing as we stand on the promises. Let's worship God like our life depended on it. Let us sing. <laughs> standing on the promises of Christ. of God's word to be filled with joy and peace. So I invite you to take this joy and go out into the world and come back again filled with God's peace. May God hold you in God's care.
knowing that God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit is with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.